these do not need to be watched or consumed in any particular order, but this is just where I'm starting off because I think it makes sense. Um, I do think that it's important to have some type of you know, stretch, tension, wave feeling on the connection naturally or be able to find that easily in our dance. And it makes sense that you would want to have a, a forward pitch for a variety of like biomechanical reasons. Um, both because if I become back weighted, right, this is going to create issues for my balance, for the connection on my leader, we're going to find it kind of early, it's going to pull me out of position, um, and it's going to affect things like down the line in my own body. If I'm leaning back, it's going to be hard to make, you know, foot uh, articulation and leg actions work properly, and so on and so forth. So I do think that some variety of forward pitch is a great place to start. Um, yes, in an ideal world, eventually every follower should be able to dance with a variable pitch, being, you know, very upright, and maybe you can lean back at times just to express something or, or do something cool or interesting that's not a basic action of the dance, to having a very low forward pitch and still being connected and still being communicative with your leader and so on and so forth. Um, but we do need to start off usually a little bit simpler than that. Now, the issue that people tend to run into with a fixed forward pitch is that if I have my hips back and my shoulders forward or my head weight forward, um, if I'm trying to think about a hip dominant connection and finding stretch through my hips and finding connection like through this point, if you think too hard about finding connection through your hips or finding connection at your hips, which is what tends to happen, um, you might not actually be able to translate that to your leader. So you'll look at follows who have a fixed forward pitch and they'll be anchoring and they'll be kind of like, they're either not finding the correct distance and they're not actually getting stretch with their leader or they're like coming forward early or something like that. And this is because like, you need to actually have the connection through your upper back, whether it's in close position, whether it's your frame, your hands, what have you. Um, even if the origin point is your hips, you can't think about creating and finding connection from that furthest point. So here's one way to think about that. So if you're standing straight up and down, and I'll try to do this from the side, um, if you're holding my hand here, this would be neutral, right? There's no natural tendency to find stretch or extension. There's no away feeling in my hand if you were holding it. Now, you know, I could create it this way or let the compression this way, and I'd be relying on you for balance. But what we can do is we can think about taking our tailbone back and down slightly. So if we have kind of an arched back, right, and our tailbone is almost pointing to the wall behind us, we don't want this, but we also don't want to think about like a posterior pelvic tilt just kind of like in place, right? Um, when you think about this as like this whole bunch of different ugly ways to think about this, but we don't want that to happen. So if I think about taking the very point of my tailbone and instead of pointing at the wall, pointing it at the floor but slightly behind me this way, I think this is a good place to start. So it's this. And you'll notice that. So if you were holding my hand, the difference between being neutral and having some degree of natural stretch, tension, extension, whatever you want to call it, directional intent, um, this is an easy way to find that. And the test is like, I can wiggle my toes, I'm not going to fall backward, but again, if you held my hand, there would still be a tiny degree of natural potential for directional intent. And I think it's a good place to start, again, um, to find this directional intent through just our basic pitch and the way we stand. Because if you think about finding directional intent just by pushing with your feet, if your partner isn't also doing the same thing, it can be very difficult to create that, right? Um, from this follower's perspective, maybe you're too heavy or too forceful, or maybe like in your pursuit of trying to find a certain feeling, you start pulling, right? So we don't want any of that to happen, and I think that finding a pitch where the natural tendency is a little bit of that can be really useful. So again, I'm going to think about taking the tailbone and pressing it down and back slightly. I can think about making the spine really long. So if I thought about stretching my spine through the top of my head and down to my tailbone, it's not going to be like this straight up and down, right? It's going to be toward the ceiling, but I'm just taking my tailbone and pushing it down and back slightly, so there's an imaginary string at the very base of my tailbone connecting to the floor like two feet or so behind me, something like that. And this is going to 
free up your legs to work properly. This is going to give you a nice low hip dominant connection. Um, but at the same time, it's not going to, um, you know, if you seek out some type of arbitrary position that you try to stay in, it can be difficult if you are, say, you know, here, for example, and trying to find stretch through your hips when this is what's actually connecting you. So the test for this is, you know, we have our hip orientation with our tailbone pushing down and back, we can wiggle our toes. You get into close with a partner and you make sure that as you're doing this, what they feel is up here. So even though your connection is coming from the origin point, is your hip weight and your tailbone, the actual like translation of that connection to your partner is being felt through your frame. You can do this with a band around your shoulder blades if you don't have a partner. Um, and of course we want this to translate into the hand as well. So if you are finding stretch, like they feel it up here, even if this is the origin point, we're not just holding hands and trying to like look for something back here with your hips that's disconnected. It's does this directly translate to my connection here? So. Again, this is just a way to think about it. It's a place I like to start. Um, and it's, I think it's relatively simple. Not easy, not easy at all, but simple. And we can just think about it again, like it's neutral, but we wanna be able to wiggle our toes so our weight's like a tiny bit biased back, but I'm still not falling backward. I'm not relying on my partner for balance. I just have my tailbone pressed back and down slightly. And I can think about that string being connected to the floor behind me whether I am sliding straight away from my partner or I'm doing some type of like arced movement uh, to kind of fill out that hourglass shape at the end of my slot. So, hope that helps.